Hey, I want to thank you for being a part of the conversation. This is Play It Forward. Real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 601 is with film director Phil Trail. The movie, Good Burger 2. Hello, it's Phil. How are you doing today, Phil? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm ready to talk about this because this is going to be water cooler conversation. This is a fun movie in a time where we need to have some time to let go of the real world and just play. Yeah, I agree with that. That's why I wanted to do it in the first place. Man, t- for the writing and then the directing. And I mean, I can't imagine what goes through your imagination when you take a thought and you turn it into something that physically makes other people just really laugh out loud. <laughs> Well, the um, the writers of the original movie uh, came and wrote this one too. So they understood the tone of Good Burger better than anyone on the planet. They wrote the, the very first sketches. So right from that, you know, it felt like I was in good hands. And then obviously Keenan and Kel, they know the tone really well too. So, you know, I mean, my job was so easy. I just was like sitting back and said action. And then sat back and just giggled <laughs> and then eventually had to say cuss, I guess. <laughs> I would love to see the research on people who would openly admit that their favorite job on the planet was always working at a restaurant. Because I worked at Pork Chop John's in Billings, Montana, and that's still one of my favorite places on the planet. <laughs> okay, we'll go and film Good Burger 3 there then, maybe. <laughs> you deal with a subject inside the Good Burgers 2 in, in the way that this really could be a shot of the future, and people are going to go, wow, but employees replaced by robots. Come on, AI technology is growing. Yeah, the main thing I was excited about is, oh, good, Cal gets to play Ed and a robot version of Ed. <laughs> so Ed playing, a, Ed playing a robot is kind of a, is just great. I mean, Cal is one of the best physical comedians I've ever worked with. And so act, him acting a robot was just, just so special to watch. When you have a movie with so much craziness in it like this, how do you keep it so simple and so inviting for fun? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you just uh, you squirt a lot of ketchup, you squirt a lot of mustard, um, and you uh, and you try not to take it all too seriously. But it's it's pretty crazy. Like, there's a lot of. I mean, if you look at the credits at the end, you look at the number of stunt performers, and you're like, crikey, there's a lot of people doing these stunts. And so we really there was a lot of you know underneath it all, it's all so silly, but there's quite a lot of planning that goes into all of it. Um, and I I did really like that. I I like. I like working really hard to make something look really simple. Well, I love the way that you let this car become a personality all its own, because I could totally see this car now at a Comic-Con somewhere. Oh, yeah, it was at Comic-Con. It was at Comic-Con New York. It's going to be in the in the Macy's Day Parade on Thanksgiving, driving through the streets of New York, Keenan and Kel. And then I think it's driving across America to come and, and spend the rest of its days in L.A. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm angling to be the guy that drives it across America. I think that would be fun. How did you put that car together? I mean, I would love to have been a part of that, that creative team to say, okay, this is the way it's got to look. Now let's make it happen and give it that personality. Well, you know, alongside um, everyone else from the original, the production designer of the original movie, Stephen Jordan, he came back and was the production designer for this one. So he designed the first Bergmobile. And he designed this this new, bigger than better one. So um, yeah, all of it, all the pickles and the wind, all, everything. I mean, there's every little bit of the car that you look at has got some sort of fast food stuck to it somehow. And uh, yeah, they had a lot of fun doing that. What's really interesting about this is the fact that, you know, even though that the original one came out in the 90s and it's such a classic, I, I would love to see how many people are going to go back and watch the original one and then come see this. Because, I mean, this, this is I, it's one of those movies you can't shake it off too easily. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, you don't need to have seen the first one to, to watch this Good. one. Like, you, it, it's, it's crazy and fun and you can just, it's a sort of standalone movie. Um, but if you have seen the first one, then you understand their friendship and you understand the tone of the comedy. Um, so it's like, and, and, and I guess there's lots of Easter eggs in, the, in this, in this new one, which, you know, you won't, you would only understand their Easter eggs if you've seen the first one, but you don't need to have seen the first one. So yeah, it'd be an interesting mix. Hopefully there's, I mean, you know, I'm sure there'd be some parents who, who know the original showing the, their kids this one for the first time. And, um, and everyone should be able to watch it together. Just giggling away oh my god you talk about those easter eggs man the, the cameo appearances because that's going to create conversation right there because they're going to go uh-uh, i didn't see that and you're going to go back and watch it again and you're going to see other things i love it when you guys do that when you plant things and were we paying attention yeah yeah there's a lot of that from like one-liners 
there's one words <laughs> there's a lot of buried in there to, to, to the more obvious things like one of my favorite scenes in the original was this rooftop scene when they sit and they sort of have a nice bonding friendship moment on a roof and so we re- rebuilt that roof and have a rooftop scene wow. there's lots of sort of bigger things like that and then just tiny little throwaways like the yo-yo and things like that 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 huge fans will remember was it a real fast food restaurant at one time and you guys went in there and just kind of redesigned it uh, where we shot this time, yeah, it was a, a real fast food restaurant, and then we, we good burgered it up. My, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the feeling I got is like, I, I just want to go get a part-time job at a burger joint now, just so I can have that kind of fun and be cut loose and just, you know, and have that relationship. Because people that work in a fast food restaurant, they, they, it really, they speak their own language and lifestyle. Well, they're like a family, right? So yeah. that's the sort of sense that we wanted to give, like this sort of, you know, family of, a family of friends, family of employees, um, they hang out together. They have fun together. They're bonded by the sort of same. They've got this insane, you know, character of Ed working with them, and yet, and yet, um, and they love him. They tolerate him, and he annoys them, and he makes them laugh. And so they're all just this tight unit who then have to go and fight the baddies as a sort of team. Ed's voice that is very distinct in its own way and we all grew up with our favorite people with their different voices and things like that but Ed's voice in this is just amazingly rememberable mm-hmm. uh, yeah he, he not only his voice but his attitude is, yes. is so That's particular mm-hmm. and um, and it, in it he has as if Ed has a son in this called Ed too who looks and speaks and sounds exactly like Ed. Yep. And so it was fascinating watching, A, this a brilliant young actor, Alex Hibbert, play Ed too. But it was also fascinating watching Kel give, give uh, Alex advice of how to play Ed. <laughs> and it showed me that how much thought and care and consideration that Kel's put into building that character. I know it's a really silly character and it's just played completely for laughs. But he's really put a lot of time into thinking who this guy is and how he acts. I mean, it, it's, it seems so silly on the surface, but there's so much sort of craft that's put into it, which I find just dazzling. Wow. Well, I can't thank you enough for bringing that team back together again and for you to put this up on Nickelodeon and being a part of Paramount. Congratulations on this. Thanks so much. And thanks for having us. I hope everyone enjoys it. Well, you'll be brilliant today, okay? <laughs> and you.